over. Last mission, last mission. The final boss mode. Plays out. And that's why, of course, these fuckery cards keep coming about, which takes us to our third and final card, which is the trailer card. You know, <laughs> of course, we got Oscar De La Hoya and Vita Belfort, you know, fighting in the main event. Now, Oscar put himself in the books of box and fuckery his last time out on, on trailer, you know, during the whole um, uh, Steve Cunningham fight, uh, where Duke got on there completely annihilated you know whether it's alcohol or something else of a illicit nature uh, or, <laughs> or he might have, yeah he might have clearly visited somebody a plug you know somebody you know backstage is probably you know fueling his vices and he got on there and said a whole bunch of shit <laughs> a whole bunch shit no steve cunningham who who was a good sport about it because uh, he, like, I think he, I, I, I remember him saying a tweet where he didn't take it the wrong way or anything. He said Oscar's a good guy, whatever, or one of his favorite fighters or whatnot. And he didn't look at it, but I was yeah. like, the way he, Oscar was shitting on him. Yeah, I'm saying like, I mean, Oscar was clearly not in his right fucking mind, and he's over there just he was talking whole bunch of shit to this dude, like. And, and mispronouncing names and swearing. Yeah, it's like couldn't have a beat his ass in a real fight. Like no matter how great you know great you are. <laughs> yeah, no. And Oscar, and Oscar's you know, and that was obviously on the Jake Paul Ben Askren fight. And Oscar was probably the legitimate top three highlight of that of the whole fucking night. You know, and yeah. it's like, it's like, it's like, and that was probably like, goddamn, like people just cannot wait. Like people get on the thriller and they just let loose. And they say whatever, and then yeah. It, so who's it, gonna troll Oscar that night if Oscar's the one fighting? Exactly. So now, and it's first because I mean, Oscar's appearance on thriller. So now it was even more interesting because now we're hearing rumblings because um, Golden Boy's deal with the Zone is up at the end of the year, and there are rumblings that Oscar wants to take Golden Boy and put it on thriller. Oh, big mistake if he do that shit. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. yeah, perfect. I, I, I'm, I'm, from that shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I would hope that someone can actually talk to uh, Oscar about and be like, yo, they're not that Fuck it, Somebody give me that plug number, nigga. Yeah, it's maybe just he'll like, listen to me. Yeah, so I mean, one thing let's try to, with the talks happening now, we have Oscar who now decides like, hmm. You know, maybe I should try my hand with this shit because I mean, Oscar was one of them cats that was shitting on the on shit, shit, well, like he was shitting on Floyd for doing these type of fights and shit like that. Like, I remember, I mean, dude, go in on this shit. But he's you know? always done them. That's the thing. Like, 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 let's not act like he didn't fight Shaq. Yeah, you know, he yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fucking Shane Mosley did too, actually. Like. Yeah, the, but but, uh, but you know, but also you know, obviously the feud between Oscar and Floyd, you know, that shit is deep. Like them, them two niggas hate each other. Like, they're, they're, yeah. like they'll never stop taking shots at each other. You know, like they, they, they're just straight petty. So, but you know, Oscar's like, hmm, maybe I should go get this coin now. And like, you know, I should, you know, I should. Yeah, he, you know, he, he, don't, he don't want them Canelo Golovkin fights no more. He he realized the ass open he would get from them from them two. Yeah, and especially, of course, you know, and especially where Golden Boy took a huge hit with now Canelo being released via the courts. So it's like, uh, yeah. They needed that. Focus on Virgil Ortiz now and then Jojo Diaz and Superbad. But no, apparently Oscar is like, ah, no, I, you know, I can get myself back in shape. I can do this. You know, let me get a car together and then let me, let, let, let me. Is let, nigga let, Thanos, he got to do it himself? Like, nigga, promote. <laughs> And, and do I mean? I, I mean, also, I mean, most of us remember, most of us remember Oscar as a fighter. Like, I mean, Oscar. I mean, I, I think Oscar has has so has so has so much fuckery over the last twenty years or so, and most people forget that Oscar the fighter was a bad motherfucker. Like, he was bad. Like, you know, I mean, dude. I mean, dude was high. It was, you know, was above average in in his skill set. Like, I mean, had, has a goat left hook. You know, has educate educated jab. It was a hell of a combination puncher. It was tough. To the he, right hand speed. He, yeah. he knew how to finish overmatch guys. Exactly. You know. Hell of a chin. And, and one thing that I, I feel like there hasn't been anyone who really 
took his place in this regard. Although I feel like Anthony Joshua comes maybe the closest. Hmm. But Oscar always gave you the big fight when you wanted it. Yeah, like I mean, pretty much like his whole resume. Like- Every year he made sure he had an event for you. And I feel like we don't get that consistently enough from the guys who replaced him. You know, I'm talking about the Canelos and Pacquiao's and the Mayweather's, like yeah, that marination era we're in, man. Yeah, that's, yeah. Like, and how come Oscar doesn't get mentioned? Is he because he's from here? He never gets mentioned with the great Mexican fighters. Is, is it like uh, yeah? Well, because the, the problem is, like, even though Oscar speaks gold medal, medal yeah, even though yeah, Oscar, I know. I know. Yeah, he's, even he's Mexican American. Yeah, he's Mexican American. He speaks fluent Spanish. He, I mean, he's, he, he's Mexican and everything, but he's not Julio Cesar Chavez Mexican. That's Mexican. The Mexicans consider him American. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah it, like, it, like, like the, the Vargas fight, the, the build up to the Vargas shit, basically. Yeah, and, then, and of course, it didn't help that that Oscar pretty much ended the Chavez <laughs> era in boxing. <laughs> so that's the, you know, that's the reason why. And Mexicans didn't like that too much. <laughs> So it's, I mean he I mean Oscar I mean Oscar got ended an era like he he was the marquee Mexican fighter until until for a while but you know, like LB said like you know no no one's really took his place like that you and know just, and I'm just talking about all the boxing like like you see how people strive to be the best to get that De La Hoya fight mm-hmm. you weren't having that like. Yeah, like I mean, he like, always fought the best guy, like out there. Like it wasn't no crazy marination process. You know, we wanted the Tito fight. That felt at the time it felt like that took a while to make, but we got it. Yeah, the Shane Mosley fight, we got it. Corte fight, he always either gave you that fucking fight. Like, like really, like like the only fights that I'd say, like I mean, I mean, I was the only thing I, he definitely avoided. Um, Margarito, that's for damn sure. Yeah, yeah, he avoided Margarito. We ain't get a winky right fight. Yeah. And the forest fight, the timing, so yeah. yeah the timing was it, it just forced just should have just I mean forest got knocked out by Mayoga and shit like that and you know and yeah yeah the and timing then was looking at cool. part time fighting at that time Oscar, so Yeah, like they, like pretty much the only mid fight that dude had in the whole pit was probably the Steve Forbes fight, and that was a free fight. He put that shit on Fox. Yeah. I remember that shit, you know. So it's like, so yeah, Oscar, uh, Oscar did, Oscar did this thing, uh, and uh, as a fighter and and uh, as a draw. So I think now, and I mean, he he's definitely, he, I mean, he's definitely sold some pay per views in his day. So this will definitely be an interesting test to see if he still has it as a you know, as a draw against Vitor Belfort, who is who again has probably seen better days as well. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna look like niggas is picking on box like boxers is picking on them because Oscar looked like he in shape like yeah I saw it, like before like if you see Oscar Oscar always looked like he was bloated in the face he was sweating sometimes you see the glassy eyes and stuff even though he'd speak properly you know you, you could tell that he was you know he was you know he was really like trying to make sure that he wasn't slurring the speech in public or on the cameras and shit like that with the exception of Triller. You know, um, yeah, it looked like he, you know, been training serious. Like, like yeah. he dedicated some time to to getting in shape. You know, but and because originally I thought it was just gonna be an exhibition, but yeah. this is gonna be a legit fight. Like, this is gonna be a count against their records and shit. And Vita mm. Belfort has only had one professional boxing fight, and that was back in 2006. It seems which he won. You know, he okay. He won. Yeah, he won. So it's it's, it's going to be interesting. And I know Vita Belfort has a whole like, I mean, dude has a whole bunch of MMA injuries. Like, I mean, I mean, this dude is passed out. I remember he, he's passed out before on you know at weigh-ins. He's caught he's caught seizures at weigh-ins before. I still remember that shit. Oh, know? damn it! He's fighting the little yeah, man. That left hook hit him. It's over. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah, so it's gonna be interesting to see. So they hold on. This is like what sparring. Like they're gonna have like the headgear on. No, it's an actual. No, it's an actual gonna be. A, it's gonna show up on box record. <laughs> it's gonna show the up on the record. Word. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's like uh, Mayweather McGregor type shit, man. Yep. Except yeah. no. Except you know, Belfort has actually had a pro fight. McGregor never did. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 
So three rounds. I mean, three minute rounds. All that. Yeah, shit. So it's gonna be eight. It's gonna be an eight rounder. Yep. Eight rounder. Wow. And so who else on the undercard, yo? So the the other one, the main, the co-main, and I know this is gonna get the MMA people crazy talking about it, is Anderson Silva versus Tito Ortiz. <laughs> oh shit! Really? Yeah, nigga. In a boxing match, yo, like dude. Silva's about to. Yeah, Silva's about to go to work. Now Silva, as we all know, got this. I don't know if you want to call this an upset or not. It should be called an upset, considering be. you know when he when he he decisively defeated Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. In his last time out, legitimately beat him. Yeah, that's him, yeah. You know, th- therefore, I don't want, I don't ever want to hear nothing about no damn Chavez Jr. being what it is because there's no reason, there's no way that Chavez Jr. should ever lose to someone like Anderson Silva in a boxing fight. In your dad's send off, like your dad's like last, you know. Yeah, in your dad, that's, that's a one damn last. shame. Damn shame. Yeah, like, yeah, Chavez Jr. should be ashamed of himself because it wasn't like, you know. He actually tried to win. I, I couldn't believe Silva actually was using basic boxing and kept his ass in line. I, just, I I could not believe what I was watching. I was like, how how do you have how do you? Maybe people you think know? Logan Paul does better against Silva than Chavez. That's how. <laughs> I, think, I mean, Chavez, remember they were talking about making a Logan Paul Anderson Silva fight, and and no one was really saying anything bad about it either. So. Yeah, and that's the thing, because 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 Silva, honestly, I didn't think Silva had it in him to actually box like that. But dude was competent, like dude, uh, dude boxed the shit. He, he cut Chavez Jr. up too with a fucking jab. He cut him up, like. Yo. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, he, so basically, he definitely. So now, obviously, we went over a former world champion like that. Now he's going in the ring against Tito Ortiz, who I don't think has ever boxed before. To my knowledge, well, I mean, if he can't get you on the ground, how is he gonna have hands? <laughs> Yo, Tito Ortiz, though. I mean, in his prime, though, Tito Ortiz was a bad motherfucker, though, in MMA. Yeah, of course, of course. Oh yeah, yeah, he was. But I think I think he's just no more for his fuckery. Like I know, obviously, he married uh, fucking Jenna Jamison, and he had that little N-word rant that he went off at, like because he was drunk or some shit like that. He has problems. He'll probably give him Jenna Jameson. He probably gave Jenna Jameson more hands than he will Silva. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> bars. Bars. Yeah, yo, bars man. for real. Yo, so I mean, and obviously, so yeah, this is the image. I mean, this I mean, is the- dude has so many injuries. He shouldn't even be fighting no more. Tito Ortiz, cracked skull, cracked orbital, uh, knee injury, elbow injury. Like he's had so many surgeries. It's like he's like a bionic man by this point. But the funny thing is too, he's like he. I mean, he, I mean, he. I mean, his last. I mean, he's actually won his last like three MMA fights. But he has a fight since 2019, though. I mean, but he, but who he, he fought? I think he fought Alberto Del Rio. Uh, yeah, and he fought Chuck Liddell, who of course was broken as shit. Anyways, and, uh, yeah, the one nigga more messed up than he is, like. But the fun thing is too, Silva. I mean, Silva actually has some injuries too. Like Silva has them has leg injuries, but then of course, like I said. That's why it made it amazing to me that he was still able to move like he did against Chavez Jr. Like, I would imagine Chavez, I guess, well, I think probably my reason is Silva was probably as heavy as Chavez Jr., which probably the reason why Chavez couldn't move him around like he did, uh, like he usually does with other opponents. And then yeah, he gonna whoop on Tito, then. Yeah, he gonna whoop on Tito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gonna whoop his ass. And good, and good. I hope he whips Tito's ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tito, yeah, fuck Tito. Like, How I mean, many rounds did he, you know? <laughs> How many rounds? Is it like eight or four or six or... It's probably, I think it's eight. Yeah, it's eight rounds. Yeah. So yeah. we all in agreement with Oscar because I beating the shit out of uh, Belfort, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Belfort, I mean, it, it, it doesn't even matter because I know Belfort, you know, has had his issues with the TRT shit too, like uh, taking that shit. Yeah, but, I've been hearing he might be uh, back on some shit. Yeah, yeah no, so I, I mean, I, I mean. Oscar, if Oscar, if this is a point, I think Oscar's gonna put him away. I mean, Oscar's not gonna keep this dude around for, for eight rounds or whatever the fight is. Like, there's no way, no fucking way. And any other, any other fight on there on the? Yeah, there's, there would be? yeah there's two more. Uh, David Hay is gonna be on this shit. <laughs> oh, him, him. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and then he's gonna be facing that mo- that millionaire again, Joe Forninger, who. Of course, his last time out, he was also on that Ben Askren, Jake Paul card where he knocked out that reggaeton artist, Raycon. 
Well, of course, you know, you made it kind of bigger than that reggaeton artist, artist too. Yeah, he, like, did, he did beat his ass though. He, he, you know, he beat the shit out of him. And the funny thing too, Fournier, this fight only came about because Fournier, like I think they were both peacocking a little bit, you know, because you know David Hay, he's a former two division champion, he's a former heavyweight champion of the world, and Fournier thought he was on that type of level too. And then, you know, Hay was jokingly saying, "Hey, you know, let's say, no, I could definitely, you know, I could take you on and whatever." And Fournier took that shit seriously. You know, and because yeah, cause yeah if I would say I would take that shit serious. <laughs> I could, dude. Honestly, it's low key disrespectful. It's it's one thing. Look, when you start getting to heavyweight, and I'm talking about from light heavyweight up, mm-hmm. disrespecting boxers that fought at, that competed at that weight. It's, it's worse because you're talking about guys who are going to be naturally bigger, heavier than you. Right. So imagine them fighting guys on their level and, and how they look at you. Mm-hmm. Middleweight, we don't really look at middle middleweights. We kind of look at like as equals, that you know, casuals. But when right. you start getting to niggas who's damn cruiserweight, heavyweight, yeah, you can't be on some like yeah. I think I could take this nigga out. Like really, like no, you can't. Yeah, and it's just, especially with David Hay. David Hay, you know, David David Hay was a cruiserweight who manages who manages to stagger the biggest heavyweight champion to date with one punch. Exactly, dude who dude who stopped Ruiz like yeah, like this guy could punch and and he had defense agility like he could move like yeah. Like, and so- how you a David Hay friend and you haven't really seen him like. You must have didn't see him fight or something. Yeah, to I'm say saying. That. Yeah, because like, because like, you should not. I mean, David Hay may not look like he like he did in his prime, but he's still very dangerous. He's still incredible. I think, I think they probably look at him uh, like I guess dude looks at him as the pretty boy boxing ass dude I know. Right. Yeah, I, I probably because I, I always made the joke that David Hay was the Craig David of boxing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you and, and you and you write to like yeah, dude, I mean, that's dude, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and like say, David, like say though, but David Hay though, offensively in his prime was he had like he had fast hands, he had fast feet, he had power, he had head movement, like. And he's like six two. It's like he's not no little dude. So, yeah. like, I don't, I don't get think, the whole he, disrespect. Like, yeah, and so yeah, a multi millionaire who's been who's been playing who's been playing boxing, thinking he could take someone out like that. Yeah, I think I think, I think it's time for I think and he's still, and the, and, the, and that dude is still undefeated because he's had he's had I think ten legit pro boxing fights. So I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, you gotta feel like it. And it's not like David Hay. Like is uh, was a heavyweight contender, cruiserweight contender, yeah. former title challenger. No, he's a former he's a former champion, right? Who's been to the top, the highest level of the sport. If, if you if you were able to fight a Klitschko during their peak, their run, mm-hmm. you reach the highest level of heavyweight boxing. And if you beat them, then shit, you you was there at the top. Man. Exactly. So it's just like, so. Yeah, I mean, so, I, so to fight somebody at that level and who was a champion, like you, dismissive is a motherfucker. Right. So I, I'm so I'm hoping that Hey does give him the hope. I mean, I mean, if Hey wants to let it go out a couple of rounds, sure. But I hope it does not go the distance and it shouldn't go the distance because Hey hits two. I mean, Hey. I mean, obviously Hey is not what he used to be in his prime. But that hey, friendship hey, is gonna end that night. Yeah, like honestly, like he needs to, like I mean, honestly, because some, honestly, some people just need to have that respect beaten into them. Four Dude, years, think about it. Like, l- look how we would act like if our friends would step to us, knowing that we boxing fans and we don't train and we're pros and you know, fucking you know, Golden Gloves and stars anybody you know what i mean you got real experience in how we would look at the average person like man you know i i'd knock your ass out nigga all it takes is one punch you know how we uh, we would be offended by that highly right? offended i'd be like oh really yo oh, nigga you ain't never do a thousand jabs in your life like <laughs> i beat the shit out of you what the fuck like 
<laughs> like, so imagine if you accomplish what David Hay has. Mm-hmm. And imagine how you would feel somebody that just makes more money than you that you cool with your friends. Mm-hmm. And he he does your he do, he took what was your fucking bread and butter, your fucking livelihood, and he's able to do that as a hobby. Right. He puts you and he puts himself above you. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 Nigga, you, if you, you don't you feel got, the fucking way. <laughs> yeah, you gotta punish that guy. And I just hope David Hay, because Fournier, I mean, Fournier already rubs me the wrong way, too. Like, you know, so, I mean, I, I, want, I want to do something like that humble. Now, God forbid, though, Hay has has one of, you know, one of his leg injuries flares up and, you know, and he loses. That's the only thing, dude, man, could bank on. Like, yeah, that, that's the that's o- really only point. fucking thing. Yeah, I mean, and of course that that would easily be the that would be the biggest upset of the year if Fournier should ever get a win of a lifetime. Yeah, exactly. And then I'll be like, okay, David. Um, yeah, clearly your legs are not even up to beating someone like this. No, so you need, you need to go get the, some Tesla boots or some yeah. sci-fi shit. You know what I'm saying? You might even get get you your hover in the ring. <laughs> I'm saying, be like Magneto or some shit. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, but I think I think most of us agree that probably Hay will probably knock him out at some point. I mean, if it goes at past any four, point, at one point, two point, with a matter point. Now, if it goes if it goes a distance, it's an L. Even though it, it might, David Hay will probably win this by decision. Unless he obviously takes it easy on him, but I wouldn't. Yeah. Now, if Hay goes all out and beats the shit out of him, and Fournier legit takes it and lasts a distance, then I'm gonna be like, well, motherfucker's tough. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the only way where each guy kind of wins, because yeah. then it's like, you know, you respect dude now, like, he took that heavyweight ass whooping, and exactly. hey, you probably look at it like, yeah, he could have got him out of there if he wanted to, but I think he just wanted to beat his ass, so. Right, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only way he could just go by where, we, where everybody has the same respect going in, coming out of it, but mm-hmm. other than that, it'd be a hey brutal beatdown. Yep, and then the and the last and the last notable fight on this card too, which is probably the only fight where you actually have fighters that are actually probably in somewhat in their physical primes actually fighting, and it was a card that was originally on Lopez Cambosis, Andy Vences versus John O'Carroll, and truthfully, I mean that's it's not a bad fight. It's it's the opener of that. It's not a bad fight. Andy Vences again, you know I mentioned before, like he had a, you know. He had a fight of the year in the bubble against Luis Alberto Lopez, like where he where he lost. He lost, but he lost a split decision though. Um, so, hey, this is his first fight since that loss. And yeah, John O'Carroll though has actually seen. I don't know. He's. I don't think he's seen better days. I mean, he gave Tevin Farmer a hell of a fight too. Like one of the really rare fights where you know Farmer was really trying to put somebody away. And then of course you know he gave Scott Quigg his karma knockout, the one that was. Uh, you know, the you know the, the one that was coming, and he, he ended up <laughs> with career. So I mean, so he's you know, so it should be it should be a good fight. It should be a really it should be it should be a really good opener. Especially for a good opener. Yeah, at least it's an opener. You know, it's, if it was a cold main or some shit like that, then I'd be like, nah. But it's an opener to it's an opener to act to some fuckery. So that's okay with us. <laughs> this this card seemed more solidly built. Yeah, I actually, I'm intrigued for each fucking fight. Yeah, and and this, and this is where I mentioned before because Oscar, and this is why I mentioned before Oscar and Golden Boy. Like the one thing is like I mean, Golden Boy has his issue, but the one thing that it does right though, they know how to build cards, and I wouldn't be surprised if Oscar had a hand in building these fights as they are. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't be surprised. This it's a it's a good card set up. Like I, I definitely watch it. You know. Yeah, I think all of us will watch it. I mean, and like I think Oscar, he just can't afford to give them the whole company. Like he just need to do spinoffs with Triller, yeah. or you know, get you know, bid for a fight and get one of his guys on the platform. You know, yeah, Ryan like, Garcia be the perfect, but dude kills his own momentum. So, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean if Oscar wants to do Triller, I mean, do Triller, yeah, do Triller, but don't don't put your company on Triller. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. Just, you know. I mean, I know. I mean, like, I mean, obviously, gotta have some conversation with the zone because I mean, I think now because they're in that in that state because 
you know, oh, the zone because they lost their cash cow and the zone is like, yeah, we want we want we want Canelo. And then, you know, and even though Golden Boy does have enough talent that they could actually put on, you know, they, they put on stuff. Every most of the cars on the zone this year have been solid as fuck, you know, or, the, you know, so it's like, you know, and then, of course, you know, we all know Golden Boy has burned a lot of bridges on network TV. Too many, actually. <laughs> so it's like if you put it on Triller, it's just like you're going to, you know, put in the whole thing on Triller Fight Club. I don't know if that's like the best thing to do because Triller doesn't even seem to be wanting to be a promotion like that. They just want they just want to buy fights. They don't, They'll cave into Oscar, like you know, yeah. Oscar cave into the zone and just do what they gotta do. But yeah, but they, I, I just I just hope they really have some. They really think about what they're doing. They they got to Triller ain't a long term move like that. It's it's a good for a spinoff, but you know. You, you, it's not a long term investment. And I think Jake Paul even seen that. Yeah, Jake Paul was there for for two fights and got and, and then you know and and, that, and that's Trill's that's Trill's mistake. Trill didn't lock him down or his brother or anything like that. So it's like yeah, we know we 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 we, we made moves We're out of there. So it's like and now Showtime got him. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Oscar just I, I think Oscar just needs to really work with the zone. Like okay, yeah, you know I have all these fighters. You know, I have these dates. I want these dates. Because, like I said before, just fucking move them forward, like fucking Mungia, like. Yeah, because if we mentioned before, the Golden Boy cards in the zone are are, are good watches. They're they, you know they're, after, they're entertaining as fuck. So it's like, like, like the, and, the Zerto's on Golden Boy too, right? Yeah. Fucking him and Bivol, like, oh my god, like, like it, it, it's too many. This we, we we need more significant fights in the in the sport, man. Like, Right, and then Oscar, like I mean, yeah, I mean, if you want to do it, but you know, say, keep Trilla as a spinoff. Like, if you want to do your own thing, you know, and then have your fighters occasionally. Like, if you can't get a the zone date, then have your fighters on Trilla or whatever. Yeah, do that. You know, yeah, like, but don't you put your whole company. That'd be like the, like the most wow. He did that move of the year. Exactly. You know, and uh, Golden Boy can't. But be damn, a, I look forward to that card though. Bro. I do. What, I, what day is it? That is on. Let's see. It is. is it, I'm trying. I'm trying to make sure it's not on a. Because you know they be putting things on Sunday now. So let me just double check to see that shit is not on a. On fucking Sunday anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, because they they be they're wild. So it's on 9/11. So 9/11 is a. Welcome Saturday. to Ground Zero. Yeah. And funny things too, because thank you. It's a Saturday. 9-11 is a Saturday. I know because I gotta get my I know because I gotta get my second Moderna shot that day. So <laughs> Yeah, and luckily the and the and luckily the Valdez fight is on a Friday too, so there's no in, there's no interference. It's just back to back. Friday night oh, fights. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, Val, yeah, Valdez is a Friday night card. Oh, okay. Damn, glad you said that now. Shit. Yeah, so uh, it's actually good too. So it's like, you know, no cause as much as I, as much as I'm willing to watch two, three different fights at the same time, I prefer not to, <laughs> yeah. if I could help it. So thriller, thriller about to get Crawford versus Porter. Hey, like, it, and that, that's right. Yeah, that's right. The the fight bid is uh, the fight bid is this um, this this coming week. The second. Yeah. Yeah, they could just do spinoffs. Like, if they could get that, that would be huge for them if they could get uh, Crawford versus Porter. That would be huge for Triller. Yeah, and then, of course, you know, we all know the whole spinoff thing. You know, since we're on Triller right now with the whole issue with um, Lopez and Cambosis and shit like that. So, yeah, Triller has, has been, you know, like I said, Triller has been making these moves. Some are, you know, good, some are bad. I think the Lopez Cambosis one is probably the, I think they're probably their biggest uh oh this year. Because of so many, of so much bullshit that happened. So now, instead of a high-profile card like they wanted to in Miami, you know they're getting a Fight Club card in Hulu Theater in MSG. That's gonna be paired up with some with a to be announced versus. <laughs> so the versus better be good then. Yeah, though. No, but yeah, if Triller gets if Triller gets Crawford Porter, that's you know that's gonna be a that that would be a win. That would be a big win for them, and then it'll be interesting to see how top break. And well, I mean, Triller's gonna, of course, how much, how much is Triller gonna shell out for that? 
and of course top rank and P and they'll have to pay up top rank and PBC they are a certain amount so yeah because Canelo got the plant fight so I, I doubt Hearn in the zone could throw anything out yeah no, yeah so and uh, and top rank and what makes it more fascinating is top rank in order to satisfy the final fight on there top rank has to put in a has to put in a bid. If they don't put in a bid, then 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 uh, Crawford still owes them one more fight, which is that technical bullshit. <laughs> they have to bid on this fight in order in order for Crawford for whatever in order for this fight to be the final fight for top rank. Which is gonna, gonna what if they don't bid? Now I was gonna say well, then then I can see them not bidding, so they could still have a, a tie down Crawford for another fight. Yeah, because truthfully. Yeah, yeah, two for two, unless Top Rank just felt like, you know what, we just want to take this $700,000 we'll probably get from this shit and just be done with it. Top Rank, yeah, Top Rank, Top Rank has nothing to gain from this at all. By putting yeah, it... I mean, I mean, Bob Arum has something to gain. He can actually make money off of Crawford by doing nothing because he's been complaining, oh, well, Crawford fights don't make me money. There, yeah. now you can make money without having to do anything. He can get that mansion in Beverly Hills. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> So it's it's it, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be definitely interesting to see how this shit is gonna play out. And then oh, Black Jesus just mentioned yeah yeah true I'm about to get Crawford Pro. I, like I said we hope that they do because I like one thing I like one thing I like about Triller is they upset the apple cart and that's what they need. To, I, like like I, I don't mind the fucker when they do it. I just hope this time around when they do it they actually complete it. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 it can't be it can't be like Lopez Cambosis who now. Both of them have wasted like a year. Uh, yeah, both is probably longer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think the last fight for Cambosis. Part of them took over boxing within that time. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I mean, for, and for Lopez's sake, he better, you know, like I mean, he can't be struggling with no. He can't be struggling against Cambosis. Although Cambosis is capable, he can't be struggling against Cambosis like that. Yeah, I know Cambosis is properly motivated, so we'll see how that we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, you know, but... other than that, like shit, that's let's hope we get a good card with a with Triller. So yeah, we really yeah, got yeah, nothing else to say. Shit. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. something. You no know, rapper and fights they, on it. Hopefully, they dial down the fuckery a little bit. Like you know, we can't have we can't the Jake Paul Ben asking shit. Like yeah, no, we, they need to dial that. They, they can't make that. Can't go to fuck your level of 20 you know like you know keep that shit at like seven or eight or some shit like that you know have it and then just you know just just look at the you know have hbo do your production again you know get you know make uh get the team that you did for tyson and jones and just stick with that formula yeah you know? i mean the, the card alone should provide enough fuckery but you know yeah like you know you, you know and then cut down the fucking music acts too and no reggae tone that's that's a yeah. that's, that's the most important thing. If you gotta do music, <laughs> no fucking reggae toe. I, you know, I, I like I said though, me and Elby, we was outside when that shit was popping. No reggae tone in that shit. Oh no. my god, you and your hate you for reggae tone. You don't, you bro, you don't know. You just don't just trash. know. You don't know. I mean. I remember reggaeton. I wasn't. I like. I, I, I was. A, I was a teenager when reggaeton was popping. Like so. Like I. I, I remember reggaeton. Let's like. Let, let, come on, you. But I mean, I don't. I don't hate it. It just. It is what it is. Man, keep that shit in the motherfucking bodega, my nigga. <laughs> keep that with the damn dollar bologna sandwiches, all of that shit. Man. Keep well, the, chop, the chopped cheese. The chopped cheese, all of that shit. You know, poor ass Philly cheese steak. Yeah, okay. Keep that shit there. You know, keep and no Doja Cat or Sweetie, no Sweetie in some disgusting food shit on there. Like you, you can bring back Steve Urkel on there because he was funny on there, you know. But yeah, you know, just pick wisely. Like you, know. Snoop, you think is Snoop gonna be oh, there again? I'm pretty sure he's gonna be on there. I wouldn't be. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he wasn't. That makes sense. You know, so yeah, like yeah, but yeah, they got they, they got to do the shit. You know, wait, I mean. Well, cut down the music acts, you know, re no reggae tone, you know, just do that shit, you know, give them like one song, you know, maybe five performances max or at least or some shit like that, or have some, or have some live cats or there that, that, that'll wrap some hype shit at least, you know, I don't want to see, I don't, I don't want to see like, I don't want to see no Doja Cat on there, I don't want, you know, doing that fucking song again, like, I don't mind Doja Cat Sweet, just 
make sure the audio is fucked up again so I can mute it. <laughs> and and no and no fucking no slap fighting contest either in the back. Your niggas is trying to slap each other with powder on their faces and shit. <laughs> you know, none of that shit. Ah. <laughs> you know, oh. say like yeah, just, just, keep, just keep the fuckery in check and everything will be all right. I may even pay for that shit too. I may even pay for uh, the Oscar shit. You know, because it intrigues me so much. You know, but uh, yeah, just they just need to keep that shit in line. You know, and then uh, that's it. But yeah, we hope, hopefully, it's, hopefully at least in this in this quarter, Trilla gets back on track. You know, it gets Crawford and Porter, and then you know, make these fights like LB said. You know, we just need we need we need to get some more high profile fights uh, popping in boxing. Boxing needs it for the next three months. Definitely, yeah. definitely needs that. Uh, some closing thoughts. Yeah, I mean, my closing thought. I'll go first because I, I don't ever go first with these closing thoughts. I always tell everyone else to go first. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, you know, you know, Ring Gang, you know, Ring Gang is the squad, man. You know, shout out to everybody. You know, obviously the podcast. You know, I, I see y'all. The numbers are always high for Podomatic, Anchor, like you know, especially for Podomatic. Good lord. Um, yeah, no, we definitely, you know, we see y'all like fucking with our stuff, man. We appreciate the support that y'all do give and everything like that. Um, and of course, we got some more shit always, you know, coming for you. And if you saw that little montage video that you know we circulated the other day on IG and Twitter, and I haven't checked if it's on TikTok yet, um, but you know, it will be on TikTok eventually. But yeah, we definitely got more in store for you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, then that's my final thought. Um, LB, final thought. Oh no. You know, shout out to everyone in the squad. Um, PJ Fight on Architect, Clan Arky Sample Genius, Rome Top 5, RTDZ, um, Prolific Genius, you know, Ring Gang TV. Yes, sir. Um, I just hope we get some good boxing tonight. And, you know, J. Paul put it on, you know, put it on for the sport again. No one gets seriously hurt. Just some good action fights tonight. So, and if you're betting too, you know we hope that you actually do make your bets. I mean, I, I yeah. I'm I'm, suppre- I'm still suppressing my urge to gamble on this fight, you know. But I already know, you know and I know LB, LB, you know, a lot of potential fight. action tonight could go down. So hopefully everything goes down to the best of its ability, you know. Yeah. We get, we get some fuckery, we get some expected fuckery, unexpected fuckery, all of that. Right, absolutely. And then hopefully... Made a computer's pute and made a stream stream. And then there's no decent and marrow on that shit. I was going to say that. Limit to one segment. I was just thinking... Yeah, like, you know... Maybe one segment, but that's about it. Yeah, hopefully they. Yeah, hopefully they don't do it. Because uh, one thing about Showtime with these with these Paul cats is now that they, they feel like, oh man, we got we got we got to we got to do what like Triller did. No, you don't need to do what Triller did. Triller has its own kind of like, Triller, Triller does Triller. I don't you think they're gonna do that with this. I, I think Jake Paul trying to be taken as a serious boxing cat, boxing card here. Yeah, and of course that because that's for a different conversation too. But I mean, he put together a series like there's no. There's no real fuckery. Like, there's not like a circus fight on this card. Yeah, no, no. Like, like, like oh, like they, for one fight's for exposure. The other, a couple fights are exposures. One is a legit uh, fight at a division. The other one is a, probably a setup for the next Jake Paul fight with mm-hmm. the fury in them. So it's like, yeah, they, they, you know. So yeah, we just hope that it actually is, you know. Everything turns out decent and in the ballpark because I mean it is buzzing for sure. Like it's not like people are not talking about it. this shit is buzzing like crazy. My boy's talking about he's holding a pay per view party at his house for that shit. So I'm like on a Sunday, no less. So it's like you know it's out there. The attention is out there for this fight. So yeah, man. We, 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 we see the new cash cow of the sport. <laughs> you ain't getting them Pacquiao numbers. God, I mean, Pacquiao numbers, I mean, for the Ugas fight, like, I'm hearing it's been, like, I'm hearing 250K, so. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that, I mean, honestly, truthfully, that's probably the best, that's probably best case scenario in this case. Whereas, at least if it was Spence, it would have probably been double that amount, or probably even triple. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. So, it's, uh, so, yeah, I mean, we got, we got man, Spence, Pacquiao, man, that shit could have got a mil. 
Facts. Absolutely. But, uh, hey, you know, that's that's PBC's problem now. I mean, they have to go forward with Ugas yeah. now to, you know, figure out how they're going to sell, how they're going to sell fights with him as champion. But that's, that's how it goes. <laughs> Keith Thurman. <laughs> Well, we're waiting for him. We're um, waiting, waiting for that, that, that one. But we don't know when he's fighting. So, uh, one time, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's happening. So, bollocks. <laughs> AOP. You're, so I know. Uh, what about your final thoughts? I mean, hopefully we get a you know good, good matchups tonight. You know, good fights. You know, hopefully it delivers. I don't. I, I'm expecting. I'm expecting fuckery, but you know, this is this is this is the this is the night for fuckery. So Sunday night fuckery on the Lord's Day, unfortunately. But <laughs> you know, what I'm saying let's, let's hope we get some some good fights. You know, let's hope we get some more good fights. You know, the next week and the next week. But you know, I'm I'm, I'm waiting I'm waiting for the dominoes to drop for these for these big fights. So. Hopefully, give me give me something to be excited over, but we'll we'll see we'll see. I'll I'll hold my breath. I, I feel like I always say that as a boxing fan. I'll I'll hold my breath to see what happens. So uh, you know, other than that, you know what it is. Ring Gang Radio all day. You know where to find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, RingGangRadio.com. You know the vibes. Absolutely. And uh, pilot, your final thoughts. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much what all y'all said. Tonight's the night. Hopefully, you know, I'm all my friends that are anti Jake Paul are just, I'm not going to watch this. And I'm like, the undercard is, is pretty fire for, you know, one of the best, you know, on paper, one of the better undercards of the year. So I'm hoping everybody shows out. Um, I know, I think Jake Paul, I, I didn't realize this fight was in Cleveland. So I said uh, earlier that it seems like champions and the favorites are losing at their hometown. So I know Montana loves fighting at his hometown, but. We'll see if Jake Paul can buck the trend of what happened to uh, J-Rock and <clears throat> Jamel Charlo. Just kidding, but uh, you know what it is. Ring Gang Radio on every social platform. Google Bing, ringgangradio.com, and stay safe, y'all. Absolutely, yeah. I was thinking about going to the Cle- uh, Cleveland for that fight, but I was just like, eh. I, I, th- I think I, my mind, I was like, yeah, no, I don't think I'm going to do this. I think I'm just going to watch this on TV. I was thinking about it for a minute because like, I have a cousin that lives close nearby there. I was like, yeah, no, nah, I'll, 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 I'll chill out. I'm going to that fight. <laughs> Damn. You know, but uh, it was, like, like, like I said, no, I mean, it's pretty low, too, like, reasonable, I heard. Yeah, they are. Yeah, tickets are, are very reasonable. That's why I'm just curious. So it's going to be curious to see what type of business it does. I mean, I'm expecting it to be a sellout because Cleveland is that type of place. But Cleveland is, like, you know, they go to these things. Like, they, if they go to Browns games, they go to this shit right here. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, it's facts, though. I mean, it's. I, I mean, hey, Brown, are we going to do that, that NFL preseason thing? I'm just kidding. But the Browns did, are pretty good this year, last year. So we need to turn it around, maybe. Once losers, always losers. <laughs> <laughs> Browns. But yeah, no, it, it, I, I, I'm expecting Cleveland to probably be lit in that, for tonight for this shit like this, especially, you know, if certain things happen. Uh, but yeah, though, it's in uh, in of course these Sunday pay per views. Yeah, you see, it's still because like you know pay per views on Sundays is still like I mean it, I mean it was I mean there have been cards that have been on Mondays and Tuesdays and shit like that, but those are like the rarities. But the fact that we've had more than one Sunday pay per view this year is kind of crazy. Time. I think they're baking on um, both Pauls. You know, their demographic are like teenagers that are on Saturday are just not going to be worrying about that shit. So maybe they just think Sunday might be a better. Yeah, see, that, see Sunday, Sunday, Sunday pay per views work for me. If Sunday, if there was like a Saturday card, like that, like that card, like we had that weekend where we had like four different cards in a row, and like someone could have been, someone could have been put on, on on Friday, someone could have been put on Sunday. That works though. But a weekend where, but where only one card is solely on Sunday, I'm not sure how I feel about that. It depends. Like if you like to get lit, they figure everybody's home on a Sunday. Yeah, like I mean, that's what they're banking off too. Like that whole. <laughs> You know, everybody's home on Sunday night. Like, where where are you gonna be? You're not clubbing or nothing. You're home Sunday night. Exactly. And then obviously, though, and of course, you know, they'll, they'll be competing with football. Now, if you're not a football fan, then you know it's great. You know, it's great Sunday pay per views. We can have more of them. 
you know, but obviously if you're a football fan, you don't want that type of clash to happen or for it to be a common thing. Nah, I think it works right now. We'll get into the football season and we'll work against that. Because obviously if they put a better card together, you know, mm-hmm. you won't be saying that shit. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll just be vexed because I'm like, God damn it, I got to watch this fight though. But damn it, my fucking Eagles are playing. What the fuck am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> that type of shit. <laughs> you know? You know, um, but it's gonna be interesting to see. But yeah, no, if they if they if they start pulling high numbers, high buy rates on Sunday pay per views, then yeah, I can I can definitely see Showtime trying to go that route. You know, yeah, whatever works, man. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's about it. So for myself, Pat Scorpio, the New England representer, you know, for LB, I said what said what for? I'm gonna talk the name. <laughs> Damn, nigga, go artists. <laughs> so it will be so worth the go. Gotta be like with cheese, nigga, with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for King P Bodega P and for Conscious Pilot, you know, this has been another wonderful episode of Real Talk. Where as always, it shit's real, we talk about it. So until next time, peace. Peace. <laughs>